is a game that came out last year. I was really looking forward to it. I loved the previous two, and this one felt like a little bit of a downgrade. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a bad game. It looked and sounded incredible. It was fun as hell, it just wasn't nearly as good as the previous two. You had these little problems, like some of the transformations just being outright overpowered, the fact that if you spent the time to find everything, you became invincible, and the overall plot was less engaging, even if that isn't why you play these games. And it turned from a Metroidvania into a side-scrolling platformer. I had 100%ed it in about a day and never touched it again. I was a little late to the party on this game, but when I got there, I stayed. Everything about this game was amazing. The music, the platforming, the ease of doing everything. And with the difficulty of this game, you never fought with it. Every time you wanted something done, the game would just do it. I mean, when I played this game, I told people, I told them, this is what I wanted Half Genie Hero to be. This is the game that I really wanted. This is what I really wanted. Hollow Knight makes every game I've mentioned so far in this video look like a shareware demo. This game was created by a team of Aussies who nobody had heard of, whose last game had a 1 star rating on Newgrounds. It got funded on Kickstarter, then blew just about every developer that tried to revive their old genre out of the water. Hollow Knight is an almost impossibly well-crafted game. Comparing it to other games like it, you'd think this was an 8 year old kid's idea for a sequel to his favorite game, but biggerer and betterer. And I think that was Team Cherry's mission statement. Somewhere in their lobby, they have a plaque or something written on the walls in gold lettering reminding all their employees what they're working towards that says, So is the game like Super Metroid, but he has a sword and... and he like, he can do all the Metroid stuff, like long dash and run on walls and he there's one problem with this, and that is that the abilities you get are pretty much just the ones you get in other Metroidvanias. Double jump, wall hang, short and long dashes, the obvious stuff. But this is just a little bit of a nitpick, and also really shows off one of the most impressive things about this game, the aforementioned 8 year old ideal sequel. This game is a sequel to the Metroidvania genre as a whole. This game takes all the stuff you know, and all the stuff that worked really well, and builds on it. It adds more good, and takes away none of it. You have a bunch of offensive abilities, but if you use those, you might not have enough soul to heal yourself. And the healing ability of soul is the first thing you get, and the thing you're probably going to end up using the most. It is tough, but fair. But if Shovel Knight at its hardest was a strict dad, this game is a drill sergeant. This game can be a bastard, but like Shovel Knight, it never feels like the game fucked you over. It feels like you need to slow down and think about how to approach a situation. The bosses are very tough, and the platforming segments can be ridiculous, but the game is so big and has so much, it gives you a lot of time to practice and hone your skill. You spend so much time that every button combination to get you from point A to B feels like second nature you'll be given a challenge that might seem difficult, and you'll blow through it. Not because the game made you stronger, but because you just got better. Everything in the game works. It runs like a dream. Gameplay will give you no problems. I don't know what else there is to say. It's like putting a round cylinder in a round hole. It fits, it works, it's good. Good job. Could have been trash, but it sure wasn't. A lot of complaints fly around about a lot of open world games. Too much world, not enough stuff. This game is the best of both worlds, and not in a happy medium kind of way. This game has a gigantic, enormous, massive map, and every single room in every single area in this enormous map is well crafted and interesting, to the point that you aren't expecting new enemies in every section, you're expecting new enemies in every new room. The amount of enemies in this game is insane, and you'd think that they'd be recolors of old enemies. They're not, almost ever. They all have interesting attack patterns and mechanics. Every last damn one of them. And that's not to mention the array of bosses that this game has. 
You tell cynics about this game, and they won't even believe it exists. What, some Australian company made a game this big and all the rooms are filled with stuff? Pfft. No, it's true though. And another thing about this game is I never fell off it. I kept going. Everything is so engaging. The enemies, the bosses, the platforming segments, and with the constant progression, I pushed through a lot of tough shit just because I wanted to see what would happen next. I was excited to play this game. I wanted to explore more, I wanted to find more, and I loved all of it. Following the theme of bigger and better, there's just so, so much to do in this game. The Shantae games and the Shovel Knights took me about 48 hours each. I 100% of the Shantae games. This game took me 40 hours, and I got like 80% of everything. This is the most impressive part of the game. This is an indie Metroidvania that I spent as much time in as I did with Nier Automata in one playthrough. This is where all the Dark Souls comparisons for the game come from. The first thing you learn is how Hollow Nest is the grandest kingdom of them all. Then you reach the fading town above and find that its days of grandeur have been over for a long time, and that for some reason people keep going into the kingdom for money, exploration, or because something seems to call them to it. And you go down too. You don't know who you are. You don't know what's down there. You don't know what kind of anything you might find. You know you're small, but strong. And everyone who can see, can see that you're not just some other bug. And then, you slowly learn of the hubris, fear, and corruption by the goo. And the part that you played in all this, as small as it was. The cataclysmic event has already happened. The world has already died. And you are wandering around through the pieces and picking them up. It puts you into our little bug's tiny, tiny shoes by letting you project whatever you want onto him. I love this method of storytelling in games because it makes the game part of the game so integral to the story part of the game. It uses the medium as its storytelling method rather than just giving you something. And while in the beginning it feels like the game doesn't even have a plot and just little scrapes of lore lying around on the floor, by the end of the game, you get some incredible moments. I have never seen a game in which the boss that you've known you had to fight the entire game helps you kill him by stabbing his own goddamn self in the stomach. Good. You've been watching this video the whole time. You've seen how good it looks. And with the scale of this game, along with the amount of enemies and bosses, the only way that you would be able to make a game more impressive in this department is if you made a game that was painstakingly animated in the incredibly antiquated pain-in-the-ass Fletcher animation style, and have all of the designs entirely on point with how they might have looked in a bimbo cartoon, rather than feeling like a eh, modern throwback with the characters' the designs that look similar. But that's crazy. No one would do that. Since I released my Hollow Knight video, we've gotten two free DLCs. I feel like my feelings on this are self-explanatory. This has been a very good year for games. And honestly, I'm in the minority with this game being my favorite because of the huge amount of good games it needs to compete with. But this is the one that really blew me away. The scale, the story, the music, the monsters. This game went above and beyond the Call of Duty. It is exceptionally impressive in every facet. When I was playing this game, I couldn't stop talking about it because of how surprised I was by it. And I wasn't sitting there excited for this game to come out. When I found it, or more when Sane suggested I play it, I had no idea what I was going into. But the deeper I went down, the more incredible it got. It really, truly is the biggerer, betterer sequel to the Metroidvania genre. This is a game that lives up to the gold lettering written on the wall. Good job, Team Cherry. You made a masterpiece. <laughs>